guys, welcome back to my channel, Mermaid Nina here. Well, in tonight's video, we are actually gonna talk about motion sickness. And I realize this might not affect most of you, but I do get a lot of people who ask me about motion sickness at Disney World, meaning what rides tend to cause motion sickness or what rides, you know, may be worse than others. You get where I'm going with this? So anyway, I thought in tonight's video, I would take you ride by ride, that's right, in all four parks. And we're gonna talk about each of those rides that can indeed cause you a little bit of just, you know, tummy trouble or motion sickness or maybe not make you feel 100% when you get off the ride. Um, everybody is different, right? Everyone has their own level and different ways that they kind of get sick, right? Some people just can't do upside down coasters. Some people can't do big, deep drops. Some people, like Nina, can't do anything. <laughs> As you guys probably have known from previous videos, I'm extremely motion sensitive. Um, I kind of always have been. Ever since I was little, you know, I would get sick in the car. I definitely have motion sickness in the car, on airplanes, that's right. Why am I a travel agent again? <laughs> I'm a travel agent who gets motion sick. Yeah, that's me. Um, and then when I was at, you know, a kid and I'm going to Disneyland, there were just certain rides that made me just a little, ugh, little more upset than others. And even though I have been on pretty much every single ride at all the parks, I do know which rides kind of trigger uh, something in me more than others. So I thought I would help you guys out. I literally typed up every single ride that could indeed cause you some sort of issue and we're going to talk about the rides and what you know the ride involves so that you can decide for yourself but no matter who you are in what situation unless you are 100 percent a thrill junkie who never ever gets sick i just think you should be prepared i think everyone should be prepared as a just in case you know pack dramamine if dramamine works for you they even have Kids Dramamine, yes, I pack that for my kids. Gum, I am huge on gum. I talk about gum a lot in other videos. I always have gum. Um, and it's something I'll pop in right before certain rides. Other good things to think about are just mints or special uh, candies here. I have these for my daughter. They're called tummy drops. They come in different flavors. This one's ginger, they also have a pear and a mint, and you can get various combinations. I actually get that on Amazon. So some form of you know, mint or drop or just ginger chews. A lot of people will have ginger chews. Some people put kind of motion sickness oil behind their ears or they sniff it. I mean, whatever works for you, just be prepared in advance. You know, uh, if it's really, really hot out, be prepared and make sure you have water and ice and cooling towels or some sort of cold washcloth you can use or put behind your neck or even a handheld fan. If you are in the middle of a ride and you all of a sudden don't feel good, sometimes I just, you know, breathe. And I know this sounds stupid, but it's just very much like, I feel like I'm in Lamaze class, right? <laughs> I'm in the hospital giving birth. I literally just kind of close my eyes and I breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth. And I will really do that through a good portion of the ride, if it's a ride that causes some, you know, weirdness in me, just be prepared. If it's a ride that involves 3D glasses, I have found that sometimes if I don't wear the glasses, I'm actually okay on the ride. And for various other rides, I kind of just close my eyes. There are certain parts of the ride, um, and this includes Soren. that's right, we're gonna get into it, I just kind of close my eyes and wait till I'm feeling a little bit better, you know, and I'm doing my breathing and then the ride is perfectly fine. So just kind of plan in advance and know this about you. But like I said, I always have gum. My kids always have, you know, some sort of hard candy drops in their backpack and you just want to be prepared because you just don't know. And one of my key tip, tip, tips, guys, if you are at all sort of motion sensitive, and it's super hot out, Florida super heat, right? And you're already overheated, perhaps skip the ride. 
I have seen so many people pulled out of EMT and having to go to the hospital because they rode something they shouldn't have purely because they were already overheated. And they went, then they went on like a super intense motion sensitive ride. So just be prepared. And for those of you who are pregnant, I get this question a lot. I have been to Disney World pregnant. I have been on rides while I was pregnant, you know, I'm not a doctor and I'm not your doctor. The best thing to do is ask your actual doctor what is safe for you and your pregnancy. Everyone's pregnancy is different, different stages of your pregnancy. I was high risk. Um, so that was affecting me a little differently than other people, but I have 100% been to Disney World pregnant. Um, I can tell you my doctor told me that I could only ride rides that little kids can ride, right? So my toddler who was with me, anything she could ride, I could ride pregnant with the exception of pirates. My doctor did not want me going down pirates, which ironically is not really on this list because uh, it's not really motion induced, but it does have a tiny little hill that most people can get through. But hopefully this helps you guys out. So we're gonna get into it. But first thing I wanna let you guys know that if you actually go to the Disney World website, right, and you go under things to do, and then you further go under uh, attractions, you can actually filter through the rides according to your situation. You can do thrill rides, drops, small drops, dark rides. You can filter through pregnancy and other such things so that you can kind of filter through what rides, you know, Disney tells you you can do. I will say that not all the rides do show up on that list. So my list is very much more complete than what shows up on the website, but just know that that's an option for you guys. So. You ready? So be prepared, pack the stuff anyway, research the rides in advance. But yes, I'm going through all of them and I'm gonna tell you about each and every ride that could affect you depending on your level. I don't mean to offend anyone. So if I say a ride has motion issues and it is fine for you, great. But just know some people could have issues with these rides, okay? We're gonna start off with Magic Kingdom, you ready? <laughs> All right, Big Thunder Mountain. Key here, I have said it before, if the word mountain is in the ride, it's probably a coaster, so just know that in advance. Uh, Big Thunder Mountain is like a runaway train gone rot wild, right? Gone crazy. It is 100% a coaster. Um, the vehicles do go fast and they turn and they do dips and it's a super fun ride that I have been on several times. But since being pregnant and having kids, I am definitely more sensitive to this ride than I was previously. And yeah, so just note that. It is definitely a coaster. Um, yeah, it's just like your average coaster. It doesn't go upside down or backwards, but it is very much fast and it whips you and it's, yeah. So that's Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Next one up is Seven Dwarf Mine Train. Now this is considered a coaster. It is on the mild side, at least Disney wants you to think that way. Uh, they call this a family coaster. Disney wants you to think of this as a starter coaster for your little ones. Uh, not necessarily. <laughs> just note that it is definitely a coaster. So just like Big Thunder, you are going, you know, you're whipping around and you're going across and you're going up and you're, you're doing the things, right? Um, and then also note that the individual cars or vehicles within this ride do a little rocking back and forth as they're whipping through you know the track um, they do this because they're mine cars which is ingenious actually of disney uh, because when they did the mine cars that's what mine cars do they kind of rock a little bit so your car rocks as it's whipping through the coaster but just know it's like what 45 seconds long it is considered an introductory coaster uh, for young families so yeah if your kids have already done a few other things they're ready for some thrill Seven Dwarf Mine Train could definitely be the next coaster for you. But yeah, just note, it definitely dips and turns and there's hills. And the nice thing about uh, these first two coasters is you can actually see them before you go on them, right? They're outdoors. You can kind of see what they're doing and be like, ooh, yeah, pass or no, that, that works for me. I can do that. So know that in advance. However, this third one ooh, is 100% in the dark you have no idea what it's doing and that is space mountain again mountain so this is 100 a coaster guys it's one of the original coasters that came out 
Um, yeah, and it's 100% in the dark. You really don't know what you're doing. And it is speed and it's dips and it's turns and it's twists and it's crazy and a lot of people love it, but yeah, motion. Not only because you can't see it, you can't like prepare yourself, right? You can't like tell your brain, okay, we're going up, we're gonna have a big drop and kind of hold yourself. You can't do that with this ride because it's 100% in the dark. So yes, Space Mountain. Next one is Splash Mountain. Now this is considered more of a mild coaster because it's not so much a coaster as much as it's a water log ride. And of course the big part about Splash Mountain, you can actually see it because this part of it is outside, but it has a big drop, an over 50 foot drop into water where most people get wet. Some people might get soaked. Most people will get some form of wet. The rest of the ride is pretty mild. There might be a few little, you know, little drops here and there, nothing crazy. The big part about this ride is the finale, is that big 50 foot drop. And even when they turn this into Tiana's, I am pretty sure that drop is still going to be there. So just know that in advance about Splash Mountain. Now I put this in here because it's coming soon, but just know this about Tron, right? The big ride that's supposed to be coming out and it keeps getting pushed back. Uh, Tron is 100% going to be a coaster. You're on your own little like speed motor, you know, motorcycle like uh, vehicles and you will do the turns and the dips and the all that stuff. 100% a coaster. Next thing up is Barnstormer. Now, Barnstormer is considered a coaster. It is a kitty coaster, um, and it does all the same things that you may, maybe Seven Dwarf Mine Train does and, you know, Big Thunder does. There are these little dips and these turns, and it kind of goes fast, and it stops just like a coaster on a smaller scale. It is definitely considered an introductory uh, roller coaster for the kiddos. Um, so yeah, if your kid can already do Barnstormer, loves it, can't wait to do more, then you would then upgrade to Seven Dwarf Mine Train. Once they've done Seven Dwarf Mine Train, you can then upgrade to Big Thunder Mountain and go from there. But sadly, even Barnstormer can get me because it is still a coaster, guys. Next one on my list is a little obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway, and that is Mad Tea Party. All I have to say about this one is teacups. It's a teacup ride. It spins. And I get that some teacups don't spin and some teacups do. It doesn't matter, guys. It is still a spinning ride and it is a no for Nina. So this one also is outdoors. So if you watch it and you're like, ooh, yeah, no thank you. Yeah, teacups spinning. It's a thing. I will say it's kind of odd though, because even though my kids can't go on some roller coasters, they absolutely love the teacups. I'm like, guys, you're driving me crazy. They will 100% go on the teacups over and over again, but to get them on Big Thunder, they're like scared little chickens. I'm like, come on guys, <laughs> you can do the teacups. But it's a different type of motion, and that's why knowing what type of motion you can do and what you can't do is what's gonna benefit you when you go to the theme parks. Next thing up is Epcot. You ready? First one on my list is Test Track. Now I'm putting Test Track on the list because, well, I can't write it. It is mild in term of motion, right? Because it's not a roller coaster, but it is fast and it does quick turns because you are actually on a test track. Like you are testing a racing car right? Does that make sense? So you're speeding and then of course the track, you know, it moves and yeah. Again, part of this is sort of outside. You can kind of see it, although you don't really see the cars as much as you see the track. Uh, just note that, yeah, it is fast. There are a few turns. There are no dips and hills or anything like that, but yeah, that's a test track. Next one up is Guardians of the Galaxy, guys. Okay, new ride. Uh, you've heard me talk about this. Some people absolutely love this ride and don't understand why other people might consider it super intense. It is. It is a virtual reality simulated coaster that can be very intense for some people who have motion issues. It was so bad when it first came out that cast members actually had vomit bags and water and wet washcloths to give people who got off the ride and felt sick. There was a time where so many people were going on this ride that EMT was kind of just waiting behind the scenes to take the next person to the hospital. 
Just know this in advance. I think so many people didn't realize that. They think new coaster, they go, and then they don't realize that, yes, that's gonna affect them in the negative. So know that about Guardians of the Galaxy. If you're already sensitive, might be something to pass, right? I know for me specifically, simulated virtual reality, all of that equals a no-no for me. I am super duper sensitive to that stuff. I just, I, I just know that in advance. Next one up, very similar, is Mission Space. I hardly ever talk about Mission Space, but it's the same kind of thing. It's an intense simulated ride to the point when, when it first came out, again, people didn't realize they would ride it and get super duper sick. Anyway, you're an astronaut, you're going into space. There's actually two levels. There's green and there's orange. The fact that they have to have two different levels of intensity might tell you something there. So green is considered the milder one, but I will tell you that some people get sick on even the green. So if you are sensitive, again, motion simulated ride where you actually have to do stuff, right? So it's not like you can just sit there and close your eyes and hope that it's over soon. You actually have chores to do because you're an astronaut flying off into space. You actually have stuff to do while you're on the ride. So yes, just kind of know that in advance. Mission space. I won't touch that ride with a 10 foot pole. Just won't, can't. I've been in it, I've been on it, but they didn't turn the ride on for me so I could actually see what it was like, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, mission space. Next one up is Soren. I warned you I was gonna talk about Soren, guys. Soren is completely mild, 100% mild. It simulates you flying, right? So you do move, it's real gentle, you move up in the air and then you kind of sit. The issue for some, for me, is the screen is right in front of you and what you're visualizing moves super duper quick. And there's some parts in that ride where the motion that they're taking you through just doesn't connect with my brain and my equilibrium or whatever the issue is. And yeah, it can make me feel a little queasy. So there's certain parts and even Soren that I will close my eyes. Just know that the ride itself is extremely mild. It's what you're seeing. So if you get into that situation, just shut your eyes and you should be fine. But of course, I have to put it on the list. Next one up is Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. I have a whole video on this ride and motion sickness. Um, yeah, so the ride requires 3D glasses. It is a virtual reality-like ride. You are on a ride vehicle that does move around. Uh, I think it's trackless. Uh, but there's screens that kind of happen in front of you that can get really intense. Like there's a lot of motion happening in these screens. And it's that motion in the screens that gets me. So when I first wrote it, I was sick. The second time I wrote it, I was slightly less sick. I've been on that ride, I don't know, dozens of times now. I no longer get sick. However, I do not wear the 3D glasses. Something about the 3D glasses plus the screen, that's what gets me. And there's definitely certain parts in that ride where I do just kind of close my eyes, uh, specifically because there is one part in the ride where you turn three times. So you spin very gently three times, but you do spin. Not crazy intense like teacups, but you are doing a spinning gentle uh, motion there. So yeah, just note that Nina can ride Remy. I just don't wear the glasses and I do close my eyes a few times. Next up, I'm gonna name both of them because they both get me the same way. First one is Reflections of China. Next one is Canada Far and Wide. And for those of you who know what I'm talking about, you're probably like, Nina, why? These are movies <laughs> in Epcot. One in China, obviously, one in Canada. I cannot tell you how sick both of these make me. Um, and they make my husband sick too, so it's not just me. But you're basically in a theater with circle 360 vision screens all around you. So there's this giant screen right in front of your face. It's all around you and it's moving. People are talking, there's images and it's moving and it's just, uh, I can't focus. Last time I did Canada far and wide because my kids were like, mom, 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 mom. I'm like, fine. I sat on the floor and just closed my 
eyes like I was a little kid in fetal position. It was not good. So just know that in advance. It's because it, it's, it feels like that virtual reality stuff to me, right? All that motion and it's so close and the screen's so big. Ah, but yeah, that, those are the movies in uh, China and Canada. Again, it's just a movie, but it gets me. So just know that in advance. I just, I close my eyes or just send the kids and I go grab a snack. Super easy. Next thing up is Hollywood Studios. So the first thing in Hollywood Studios is Millennium Falcon. Um, again, I can ride this ride. Absolutely love this ride. However, I close my eyes a lot <laughs> in this ride. It is a simulated ride. So you are in a simulated vehicle, right? That does kind of jerk and move with the motion on the screen for which you are piloting or pressing buttons because you are in simulated flight, right? You're on the Falcon. Uh, but in the end, you're not really going anywhere. So it's more or less moving and bouncing and jerking, but you're not going anywhere. It's not a coaster. So for me, I just close my eyes. In certain spots that I'm getting that feeling, you know the feeling I'm talking about, I'll just close my eyes. And I for completely forgot to you know, tell you guys, I'm usually chewing gum pretty intensely on all these rides too. So just know that I said it in the beginning, but just know when I say I go on these rides, I go on them with gum. <laughs> Next one up is Slinky Dog Dash. Slinky Dog Ga Dash is a coaster. It's actually considered a family coaster, so more of an introductory coaster. You can actually see this one outside as well and make a judgment call. Uh, but yes, I mean, there are hills and dips and turns, and it can go kind of fast. It is considered fun because you are on Slinky Dog, right? You're in Toy Story Land. But yes, it is definitely a coaster. Is it like Big Thunder Mountain? No. It's, it's really kind of hard to compare it. There is some spots where Slinky kind of does one of these, like he's doing a couple of hills in a row um, and he does kind of swing by a little bit, but he doesn't go upside down. He doesn't do anything overly crazy, but he is 100% a coaster. So just know that. Next one up is Rise of the Resistance. Okay, I love this ride as much as I hate this ride. <laughs> I have been on this ride countless times, dozens of times. I will ride it again and again and again. But again, I'm chomping on my gum and I'm holding my breath and I'm praying that I get through it every single time. So basically this ride, there's three staging areas that they take you through before the actual ride, before you're on the actual ride vehicle, right? One of the staging areas is a simulated motion area where you're not really going anywhere, right? But kind of like the Falcon, it does kind of move and you do get some jerking. And if you don't like that motion, you close your eyes. Super easy, right? Then you get to the ride vehicle. The ride vehicle is trackless. So it's not like you're following a certain track. It does like to kind of dart and move and do these like quick turns while it's taking you through some scenery, right? Some Star Wars action. Now the big issue with this ride for motion is there is a scene and I'm going to tell you where it is so that you can be prepared, right? So there's this part where you get in front of some at, -AT some at ats and your ride vehicle literally goes into an elevator that doesn't look like an elevator, but it's an elevator and it takes you up. That's it. You're riding up one floor of the elevator. For me, the going up doesn't bother me. It's when it kind of jiggles afterwards. You know what I'm talking about? When you ride an elevator and you go up and then it kind of just like snaps back into place. I hate it. I hate it so much. So it goes up, you actually go up a little elevator and it does that little bounce back, which I hate. And it takes you along some more adventures. Again, you're kind of darting and whipping and turning and you're, you know, you're avoiding the dark side, right? You're, you're avoiding Kylo Ren. And then the final area is an elevator drop. Now, I don't want to make this more extreme than it really, really is. You're dropping one floor. So basically when you went up, you now have to just go down. It is seconds long, two seconds, three seconds. It's super duper quick, but I hate it. I just do. You literally drop straight down and that's it. And you land and you do some more motion simulated things and the ride is open, over. So when that happens, I kind of just sit there, I close my eyes and I hold on to dear life, not that I'm gonna go anywhere, and I chew my gum and I get through it. Just know that in advance, guys. So yes, Rise of the Resistance, 
because the ride is so cool, I put up with the elevator part. I just do. And again, I know some of you are laughing like, Nina, this ride is no big deal. It is for people who have motion issues. So just know that, <laughs> that I'm trying to be, trying to be very honest. Next one up is Rockin' Roller Coaster. That's right, it is 100% a coaster. It's in the title. Don't get me wrong, this is very much a coaster. It goes upside down. It is fast. There are dips and turns and twists and the whole thing, I mean, it's a coaster. There you go, there's not much else I can say about it. If you love coasters, this one's for you. Next one up is the Twilight Zone. Tower of Terror. This one you can kind of see outside. At least you can see the poor people who are in the elevator. And then they scream when the elevator drops. But that's what the ride is. It is up, down, up, down, up, down. The elevator drops and it's quick and it's many levels. And then it goes up and then it drops and it does it a few times. That is the ride. So if I can't do, if I can barely do a one floor drop, on Rise of the Resistance, no way I'm doing Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. So yeah, there you go. Star Tours. <sighs> Star Tours is hard for me because when Star Tours first came out 100,000 years ago, I was actually there at the opening and I love Star Tours, loved it. But they've changed it and they've updated it to the point where I can't go on it anymore. So it is a 3D glasses ride. So of course, if you are extra nervous, you can just take off your glasses, but it is a simulated ride and it's an intense simulated ride. Again, you're following whatever the screen is. So your vehicle, which doesn't really go anywhere, does move and jerks and shakes with the screen. My body says, no, thank you, unfortunately. Um, and just note that sadly, when my family goes on that ride, they love Star Tours, by the way. My kids, my husband, everyone loves it. I kind of sit back and wait. I cannot tell you how many people I've seen throw up after that ride. I can't tell you how many times I've seen them have to call EMT to take this person to the hospital. Know that in advance. Next thing up is Alien Swirling Saucers. Okay guys, if I put teacups on the list, I'm gonna put Alien Swirling Saucers on the list. 100% a kiddie ride, families alike, right? But it's just like teacups. But rather than like spinning like a teacup, your vehicle kind of like dances and spins. It's kind of hard to explain, but there is some spinning and whipping that you do. Again, this ride is outside, so you can kind of see if it's up to your speed. It's like a milder teacups. I think that's the best way I can uh, explain it. For those of you who are from Disneyland, it is just like uh, Tomater's uh, Jamboree ride. It's the exact same ride track, but it's like you're kind of dancing and twisting and spinning together. I don't know. It's totally fun if that's your if that's something you enjoy. Next thing up, Toy Story Mania. Yes, I have to put this one on the list, guys. Mild, extremely mild ride. But there are certain parts in the ride. So in this ride, you're shooting, right? You're, you're in a video game, right? You're shooting. There's certain parts when your vehicle quickly whips and turns to go to the next area. It's that whipping and turning that gets me. So again, I'm chewing my gum and I close my eyes when I'm done shooting. So when I'm done shooting what I'm supposed to shoot, I know the vehicle's gonna do a quick turn. I close my eyes, I chew my gum, and then I wait till it's time to shoot some more. So that's the reason I put Toy Story Mania on the list. Again, extremely mild, but someone could get a little sick on that ride. Uh, next one up is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Same thing, extremely mild ride, but it is a trackless system. And there's certain parts between the virtual reality screens that are happening right in front of you. Um, and sometimes you kind of quickly turn or spin to the next area, or there's this scene where your vehicle kind of stops and the screen in front of you looks like you're gonna drop, you're falling into the ocean. I have to close my eyes because my body will actually think I've fallen into the ocean. So just, just kind of know that. That ride is completely mild. I've been on it so many times. Absolutely love it. There's just certain parts where I do kind of close my eyes a little bit. Just kind of know that. Last part, guys, 
animal kingdom. First ride up is Dinosaur. Dinosaur is, well, it's Indiana Jones over at Disneyland. Same ride, same track. It's a dark ride, so it's hard to really know what's going on. And you're in like this Jeep that is on a track, but it's jerky. It's like a jerky Jeep that kind of twists and, and then it moves. And you're, you know, you're following a, you know, a scenery that's happening. Dinosaurs are doing things, right? Um, and you're just kind of on this crazy excursion in a Jeep that kind of shakes and does these quick little jerking moves. It can get some people. My kids love it. My husband loves it. I have been on it. I technically could go on it again. I just, I don't enjoy the feeling it does for me. Even when I close my eyes and even when I'm chewing my gum, I'm just not fond of it. So when we went and did Indiana Jones here a couple weeks ago at Disneyland, it's like we all knew what was happening. We all passed around our gum. We're all chewing our gum and we're all just holding on for dear life because we know what to expect. And for some people, it's just not enjoyable. It's not enjoyable to be like jerking around a lot. Some people love it. Some people are like, no, thank you. So just know that about dinosaur. Next one up is Cali River Rapids. Now again, mild, but just note that this is 100% a water ride, right? So you may get wet. You're in a raft and you're flowing down some water, which could have some hills or a few little drops. And then you're moving and you're bouncing into the side and you bounced into the other side and then you went down a little hill. That's it. Just know that in advance. Some people don't like those hills. Some people don't like the bouncing back, but like I said, it's, it's mild. Could some people get sick on it? Absolutely. Most people, they may or may not just be annoyed that they got wet, but it is considered a motion ride, so there you go. Uh, Avatar Flights of Passage, again, very intense simulated ride. When it first came out, it made lots of people sick. In fact, it was known as Disney's most intense ride at that time. So you are in your own little ride vehicle, kind of looks like a motorcycle, right? And you're holding on to dear life and you're strapped in and the screen in front of you is simulating that you're flying. So there are dips and turns and all those kind of craziness. And then your vehicle is kind of, it doesn't move, but it kind of does seem, you know, like vibration motions with the screen which again, right in front of you, some crazy flying can make a lot of people sick. Could you go on that ride and just close your eyes? Possibly, but just know that in advance. Flights of Passage, although lots of fun for most people, can indeed, you know, be a little too intense for others between the slight motion of your vehicle and the screen in front of you. Next one up is Expedition Everest. Yeah, that's a coaster. You can actually see that one outside, but it is, it is your traditional coaster over at Animal Kingdom. It is fast and there's turns and there's hills and there's drops and it goes backwards. That's right. There's a part in the ride where you're kind of itching up and all of a sudden the track, it's gone and you just whew, go backwards. Just know that in advance. Most people love the ride, they can't wait. It's a coaster, but again, you can't do coasters. Probably can't do Expedition Everest. Last one on my list here, again, mild, but I gotta mention it, guys. Kilimanjaro Safaris, don't shoot the messenger. I love this ride. I love this ride a lot. You're in like a Jeep-like, bus-like vehicle. And you're going along and you're seeing safari animals, real, live safari animals. Absolutely nothing wrong with this ride, except the vehicle that you go in. Sometimes it's like riding in the back of the school bus. Remember those days when you wanted to ride in the back of the school bus so you could do this? <laughs> yes, that is this ride. There is a lot of times where I was thankful I wasn't pregnant because I thought I was going to give birth right then and there. I mean, you are bouncing and certain points like the, the tire got in like a hole, like a muddy hole and you're like bouncing. <laughs> it can get pretty intense. But that's the only issue with that ride specifically is 
If you don't do well with bouncing, if there's something going on with your tummy, you have an upset tummy, a uh, pregnant, <laughs> Don't go on that ride because it is very much a bouncy situation. Otherwise, in general, that ride is fabulous. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Again, I know a lot of you are like, Nina, I don't have any motion sickness issues. Great. I'm jealous of you. But for those of us who are a little sensitive, uh, I hope this helped you out. Again, if you're pregnant, consult your doctor. Um, some rides, some people can do coasters and that's absolutely fine for them, but they can't do hills or they can't do virtual reality. So knowing the things behind the rides can help various people coming from various situations. Like I said, I've always been motion sensitive. Once I had kids, it got worse. I am very sensitive in the car. I'm very sensitive on elevators. Again, rise the resistance uh, elevators and the bouncing back up. I just can't. So everyone has their thing, but I can honestly tell you that even with this long list of rides, I love going to Disney World. My family goes on the rides and I go to something else. I grab a snack, I get a drink, I do whatever. Just because I'm personally not riding it doesn't mean I'm not also having fun in a different way somewhere else. So just know that going into it, if you're like Nina, that was too many, too many rides, I don't think Disney's gonna be any fun for me. Just note that I disagree. I think Disney can absolutely be fun, even if you can't go on these rides. First of all, I didn't name all the rides you can go on, which is vast and plenty of them. Plus there's other things to do outside of rides, right? So just, even though this was a lot, just note that that's not all that can be done. If you can't go on these rides, you can still have a fabulous time at Disney World. But as always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helped you out. Please be prepared. Pack the gum, pack the mints, pack the Dramamine, ginger shoes. Make sure you have water, all those good things. Stay hydrated and yeah, have an excellent time at Disney World. So yeah, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If the subscribe button is red, please click it, turn it gray, hit the bell icon for notifications. A like this video and comment. Okay, first of all, did I forget anything? Let me know in the comments. And second of all, who agrees with me? Yeah, I wanna know. China and Canada, the movies, do they also make you sick? Let me know in the comments, or are you like Nina, you crazy? You crazy for not being able to watch a movie. <laughs> Let me know guys, absolutely love talking to you. And of course, if you can think of another video for me to put out there, another tips and tricks, put that in the comments too because I have a whole list of videos that are coming up soon and they may have been inspired by you. But yeah guys, as always, mahalo for watching. Nina, out, bye guys.